Hey, what's up, everybody? Trader Tim from E Mini Mind bringing you another Monday market analysis. Today is Monday, June 29th, 2015. Apologies for no video last week, but I'm back and we've got a lot to talk about. So, we're going to start off with the ES. And obviously, as you can see with the daily chart in front of me, the swing low that we've been talking about, these last two swing lows <clears throat> that uh, we've been talking about being very, very important levels, has been broken. And the trend is uh, no longer just in jeopardy. The trend is, uh, is broken. We have not only... So if we... There's a couple ways to look at it. And uh, we're going to look at a couple different scenarios and take a look at both some examples from today's trading as well as how we can prepare ourselves for the upcoming move uh, over the next couple of weeks. Two weeks ago, we were talking about how these two swing lows were very important because if they get violated, you have a ton of stops that get hit. And all of those stops that get hit then start to uh, catapult, uh, if you will, on one another and take off at a more rapid rate. So uh, we start to break lows, and now some stops get hit, pushes the market lower, more stops get hit, and that's what gives us this big just continuous pushing in the sell-off. And the same thing is true with the upside. If we were to break this 2134s, all the people that got short at highs and put their stop to cover above highs would get their stops hit. And if we were to break that, that would push us, uh, with those stops getting hit, that would push us in a rapid move higher. And you can see this 2039 below us. That 50% you know, that we've been sitting in for Basically, the entire 2015, uh, with the target up at 2150s, still unreached. Uh, we've touched this, you know, 2039 levels a, a whole bunch of times, and it's looking as though, uh, you know, at this point, there's no reason why we shouldn't come down here and fill this 2039. So, going forward, the next couple of days, I'll be looking for us to push a little bit lower, kind of break into the 2039 level, maybe pierce it a little bit, and the low is 2032.50 of the of the test. So we've had the kind of one test, two tests, three tests, uh, three major tests of the 2039. If we break the 2030 level on the ES, then we're in for some for some real potential uh, quick selling. Now one scenario to consider because we are still within the long we have not broken the 2020 which is the 618 the failure level for this long setup so a couple scenarios here we come down to 39s we can immediately get a reversal at which point you'll see you know if you're looking at a 15 minute chart you'll see us coming down in 15 minute retracements down to 2039 you'll see us break the 15 minute series of shorts and then start making moves in the long direction and if we go on an even smaller time frame the 5 minute chart or the 512 tick chart you'll want to be looking at this 2039 for a break in trend which the trend into 2039s will be down so we'll be looking for a break in the downtrend meaning a failure of the 618 to initiate a long and a long at this 2039. I'm not going to just stick out a limit order at 2039s. I want to see the trend break, the short trend break, and switch into the uptrend direction. If we don't get any sort of reversal at 2039s and we break down through this 203250 level, then one of two things could happen. We could have the uh, kind of escalated selling where we break down 2032s and immediately the bottom starts falling out and we just start making new low, new low, new low and I would pair that with you know looking at the breath and I'm actually doing a webinar on market internals tomorrow uh, with Infinity Futures, and that's that's uh, market internals are the the breadth, the advanced decline line, and the nice tick. This little box over here, uh, and I'm going to talk about how to kind of use market internals in your trading. And so, 
you'll see today advanced decline line minus 2600 breath minus 19.9 to 1 those are huge huge numbers and all of these yellow dots here are times that the tick has pierced minus 1000 this is a super super bearish day and you know the day itself wasn't necessarily just a gap down and run there were opportunities to get into the trend which I'll talk about in a minute here uh, so that one scenario is we break this 20, 30, 250s and we get that immediate selling and just catapult, uh, escalated selling all throughout the day. The other scenario is if we do pierce 20, 32s and we get some initial selling, we could get a very, very rapid V-shaped reversal. And so we could come down and essentially form a giant hammer in a single day uh, candle bar and at that point you'll be wanting to look at the low ticks and look at buying a low tick of the day um, it can be it can be tricky because it happens very fast but um, you know if you've got a if you got a bracket order set so that as soon as you get into a trade your stop automatically goes in if you do try to buy a low tick and the market continues to push lower, it'll get you out right away. Uh, so those are the two scenarios, either pushing through and just escalating lower or pushing through briefly, faking people out, and then having this huge reversal where all the people that are short, now there's uh, really no one left to get short and so those buyers that do come in end up pushing the market really quickly uh, you know it's not going to be a, a immediate reversal all the way up to 2150s but it could be a very actionable uh, point to place a trade and essentially you know get into a uh, trade that immediately uh, puts a lot of profit in your pocket and uh, kind of gets away from your entry really quickly. So that's what I'll be looking at this 2039. Very, very important. I do think we'll kind of get this sideways consolidation, a couple big spikes, big body days around this 2039 uh, level. So very important level there. If we go to the 15-minute chart and look at today's price action, uh, now this gap down, at, this is Sunday night here, so we gap down at the uh, the futures open Sunday night, and then we went into a really clean series of 15 minute longs, and that took us to this morning. You notice we went entry to target, and then the next 15 minute setup failed, and this is right about the open, uh, this is the 8.30, 8.45 bar right here, essentially forming the high of the day. Uh, right off the open and then drifting lower all day. And so we broke the 15 minute short, or the, yeah, the 15 minute long broke. See, it failed the 61.8. So the first thing I'll do is draw the 15 minute in the opposite direction. And that had a 50% level of 78.25s by rounding down and adding a tick, 77. 75s that gives us an entry into the short and I'll go to a five minute chart just so you can see a little bit more of the price action here so you can see we broke down we re we retraced rounding down adding a tick 77 75s gets you into the trend and then from there <clears throat> you know it's it was just a both escalated selling all the way through the afternoon. The breath was getting worse. The advanced decline line was getting higher to the negative. Uh, we were seeing more and more ticks in the minus 1,000. So, you know, by trailing your stop, either by you know being aggressive and just trailing five-minute bars and then trying to get back in, or just trailing these swing highs. You know, when we get these breath ratios there, this negative and advanced decline line that's outside 1,500. I mean. That's just screaming, trending, trending, trending through the close. So uh, being a little bit more conservative with your stop and just trailing the swing highs as we drift lower can really, really um, you know, make for some enormous gains. And you know, it, obviously these kind of moves aren't going to happen every single week, but uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of these moves 
to uh, you know make up a great month or even a great year. Um, so and and that's you know just another reason that the patience and you know being comfortable not taking a trade every day. If there's no setups, you don't have to take a trade. If if you need a week off to recharge or you want to go spend some time with the family, you know, you don't have to trade every day, but you need to be around for these types of big moves. You need to be you need to have the capital and be able to place trades when the opportunities present themselves. So that means when the market is crappy or when you're placing trades and you're getting, you know, a couple stop outs in a row and it just seems like a crappy week, just go ahead and shut it down. You know, pull up a sim uh, account if you if you really want to uh, keep trading but don't want to do damage to your uh, to your live trading account. So, um, some good opportunities uh, both coming up as well as that we've seen the euro uh, is is really shaping up uh, to be to be fantastic. The 512 tick chart is rocking. Um, if we go to a couple things, so with the SPY. You can see how we had a high. Now we've put in a lower high, and we've broken the prior swing low. That defines the start of a downtrend. If you kind of look here, we've got a left shoulder, the head, right shoulder. So potential inverted head and shoulders, big volume, escalating volume on the decline. I mean, everything is, is screaming that that there is some substance to this move. If we go to the volatil volatility index, you know, we talked about, you know, sitting in the mid mid teens, not really much conviction that anything was uh anything was going on in terms of, you know, we'd see these little spikes up here and it really wasn't enough to say, okay, yeah, the trend is changing. Look at the difference. We're we're certainly by no means in high volatility scenario, but relative to where we have been relative to the past couple of months this is a very big spike uh, the Dow same scenario as the S&P a little bit easier to see the inverted or the head and shoulders rather strong volume today NASDAQ uh, slightly stronger but basically same thing triple top escalating volume as we start to drift lower the Russell is really the only market that made a new high and is still in an uptrend uh, you know, being the one of the four, uh, the Russell typically tends to lead the lead kind of in the general direction that we end up going. But in this case, you know, with the strong volume, with the big sell-off, um, I'm not putting a whole lot of weight on the Russell right now. So S&P breaking the swing lows. Uh, if you you know, if you if you take a look at the actual uh, distance, 205 up here to about we'll call it 210 um, to make it <clears throat> to make it even. Um, you know, five to seven, eight points is the distance from the 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 top here to the bottom of this range. So you'd be looking to five to seven points down. This is on the S and P. Here, I'll go to the. Uh, S&P 500, not the SPY. So you can see about 2130 down to we'll just call it 2050s. And so you know this distance from roughly 2065s up to 2030s, um, you know 60, 70 points in that range, in that window. That's kind of what you could expect the move lower to be in terms of where is a target for this head and shoulders. And that takes us down back here. Uh, in the you know January, uh, January December February lows, if you will. So uh, if we go to a five-year chart just for kicks, you can see you know still still trending upwards, but in the last couple of months we've certainly flattened out. And as always, looking in the past, looking in the rearview mirror, it's easier to see uh, things as they uh, they're just you know a little bit clearer. And if we go to the daily chart on the ES, well, the one thing I did notice last week was that we did have this widening formation. When you have the wider point on the left and it's narrowing, that's a pennant or a triangle. That's a very uh, good 
scenario uh, because you can get a breakout and typically a continuation of the trend. This is a uh, reversed pennant or a reverse triangle where you start tight and you get wider and wider and that's a sign that uh, you know we're going to break down and volatility is going to kick up so lots to uh, lots to take in from today's price action but this 2039 level uh, is our kind of magnet at this point we do have our general line in the sand looking for a break through 2032.50s and an immediate spike or escalated selling. So keep keep working on the uh, the smaller time frames at 512 tick chart, um, the 15 minute chart. You know, lots of good opportunities. You don't have to place blind limit orders out here on the daily chart when we're getting in these kind of environments. You only want to do that when we have a nice entry to target. You know, two, three, four, five, six times in a row, and the market is showing that you know we're in a defined trend. So with that, uh, like I said, tomorrow's webinar is at 3.30 Central Time. I'll put a link in the member dashboard, uh, and that's with Infinity Futures, and we'll be talking about market internals. So I hope you all have a great week. Any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, tim at emanymind.com. I'd be happy to help you out. Talk to you soon.